Civil War was fundamentally a human rights campaign that had two opposing sides. The North felt that slavery should not be allowed in a country that had only recently freed itself from the chains of another nation, while the South saw it as their rights being infringed upon in what was actually quite a lucrative trade. One of the events that led up to the Civil War was the Missouri Compromise, which allowed the territory to achieve statehood as a slave-owning state and the main territory to become a free state, thus maintaining the balance in Congress. This would be the beginning of a division and a two-party system. Much like the slave revolts of Roman times, a man by the name of Nat Turner led a rebellion of his own in southern Virginia, leading to the death of over 60 whites. This would spark outrage and eventually be put down by the militia. As a result, education was prohibited and the right to assemble was even more restricted. In 1857, the Dred Scott decision further polarized the two sides of politics when a Virginia slave tried to sue for his freedom in the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Roger Taney proclaimed, Blacks are so far inferior that they had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. It was at this point that the lines drawn in the sand were clear. John Brown was a martyr to the abolitionist movement when he began organizing raids comprised of both white men and free slaves in Virginia. He was eventually caught, tried for treason, and executed. Interestingly enough, the commander responsible for his surrender was none other than Colonel Robert E. Lee. This event would cause Southerners to militarize in order to protect themselves from further instances such as this. Abraham Lincoln was elected into office by a wide margin in 1860, despite his anti-slavery platform. Shortly after the polls closed, the state of South Carolina seceded from the Union. Several other states would follow in their tracks before the year was out. Despite the secession, Lincoln decided to send the supply convoys to federal forts still located in the South. The convoys were turned back by southern warships, and the first shots were fired in the direction of Fort Sumter. The garrison would surrender after 34 hours of shelling. Lincoln would later call for 75,000 troops to join the Union Army, causing several other states to refuse to commit troops and instead secede from the Union as well. The Civil War had begun. The Civil War would produce and immortalize several figures in U.S. history, such as Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee, who would win countless victories against the Union until the appointment of General Ulysses S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman. Sherman's cruelty was legendary, and after burning the city of Atlanta to the ground, he would be quoted as saying, I would make this war as severe as possible and show no symptoms of tiring until the South begs for mercy. It was brother against brother, and oftentimes would end with families splitting to serve for one side or the other, based upon differing opinions of the right to own slaves, or that all men were created equal. The battles of Antietam and Gettysburg would test those convictions as the most bloody conflicts in U.S. history. But for those less swayed by politics, there was always the draft. Following the surrender of the Confederate Army at Appomattox Courthouse, it was clear that the implications from this war would permeate throughout the rest of the country. The industrialist North saw a major boom in its economy, while the South saw the destruction of its plantation aristocracy and its economy never fully recovered. Slavery was abolished, Lincoln was assassinated, and President Andrew Johnson declared that peace, order, and tranquility were restored throughout the entirety of the The Civil War was not just a fight for human rights, but a change in the political landscape of the United States and its citizens. It showed that no cost was too great for a cause that was deemed worthy. Lines were drawn, sides were chosen, and families were destroyed, all in the name of differing opinions about whose rights were being infringed upon, the rights of the slaves or the rights of the people that owned them. 
This is still evident today in American culture that citizens still battle with the government in a less violent way than the fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.